In this episode of our tutorial series, we will guide new users through their first experience with the Creation Kit. By the end of this episode, you can expect to learn the basic components of the Creation Kit interface and how to navigate in the 3D render window. When you first open the Creation Kit, it can be pretty overwhelming to understand what's in front of you. We're going to go through each element of the interface and make sense of it all. The first thing we're going to look at is the main toolbar. This is where most of the Creation Kit's features can be accessed, either through the menu or through the buttons. Instead of going over every single one of them because of how numerous they are, we'll explain each feature as it's needed. Before we can get started, we need to load some data. So we're going to click on the File menu, and then click on Data, and then we're going to double click on Skyrim.ESM, and then click OK. Remember when this warning window comes up to just go ahead and click Yes to All. The main interface we're going to be using to access elements of the game for this tutorial will be the render window. Right now it's empty because we haven't loaded a cell yet, but once we do, this is where the 3D elements will appear and we'll be able to interact and work with them. A cell is the, a physical area of the game that the creation kit can load. Cells can be interior cells which are separated by load doors, or they can be external cells which load in seamlessly during gameplay. The next component we're going to be looking at is the cell view. The cell view has components that you need to be aware of. First is world space. This drop down controls what cell appears in the list below it. Leave this setting alone for now as we'll be working with interiors first. Next is XY. When working with an exterior, you can manually load a cell via coordinates. This isn't needed for interiors, so it will remain grayed out until an exterior world space is selected. Next is the cell list. These are the cells that make up the world space that you've selected. Only one cell is considered loaded at each time, but if you're using an exterior cell, multiple exterior cells may be visibly rendered in some cases. Next is the reference list. This list, which is probably empty for you right now, as it is for me, will populate with all the references that exist within the selected cell. You'll be able to access references either from this list or by physically interacting with them in the render window. Now we're going to take a look at the object window. The object window allows us to view the base objects that are used to create the game. Because there are so many, we're only going to refer to the categories and objects that we're going to actually use in this tutorial. Just like in Cell View, this window also has different sections. Like the Cell View, the Object window has a filter that we can use to narrow down what shows up in the list below. Then you have the Category list. Below the filter, you see the many categories of base objects. Next is the Based Object list. On the right side of the window are the base objects that you can look at, edit, and most of the time place right into the render window. It's important to understand the difference between a base object and a reference. Whenever you put an object in the world, you're creating an instance of that object. If you drag an object into the world and make changes to that object, it's only going to make changes to that reference of the object. If we make changes to the base object, all instances, including those already created, of that object will be affected. Because of this, when you're modding the game, you'll usually want to avoid modifying base objects that other mods may rely upon. And that's it for this week's episode. We've learned a little bit about the Creation Kit interface. Join us next week when we will learn how to navigate in the render window. We'll see you then, and don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe.